Shavatov and Bokertov. It's actually not really Bokertov, it's Shavatov though, because it's well after lunch here, okay? Uh, welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Again, today is the eighth day of the sixth month of the year 5781. It's also the 29th day of August 2021 on the Gregorian calendar. And we're getting ready to continue to end our expository teaching of the book or the Tanakh, the whole entire Old Testament. We're going to finish with the book of Malachi. And I'm going to open in a quick prayer and I'm going to dive in and we're going to get her down and get her done. OK, so let's go to the Father in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. We thank you for the opportunity to teach this word. And Father, we do, we still know, we see in part, we prophesy or teach in part until that which is perfect comes, which is our Mashiach. But until then, we, we're going to look to a glass darkly and we understand that. But Father, give us understanding. Help us to rightly divide your word. Help us to understand the difference between you and your son and understand prophetic as much as we can, but we know they are secret things that we will not know. We, and we know that you speak in idioms and parables and that it's through a stammering lip and another language that you're going to be speaking to us, so we have to discern that through the Spirit. We ask that you'd give us an extra anointing of that Ruach HaKadosh and teach us all things, and we ask it all in Yahushua's name. Amen. There's things in here that I can't see how, you know, they line up perfectly. But I do know that the difference between our Messiah and His Father, Yahuwah. And we have to rightly divide that. We can't apply everything to the Messiah that clings to the Father's kingdom because the book doesn't teach us that way. <clears throat> so let's go to the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of Yahuwah, of the of the Malach of Yahuwah to Israel by Malachi. Malachi. Uh, chapter 1. Okay, verse 2. This is in red. Almost all of this way over to halfway through 2. Okay, so you know that. This is Yahuwah speaking to Malachi. Okay, it says, And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. And in mountains here is speaking about his kingdoms, his power, okay, those ones that were in charge, okay? So he laid all those waste, and his heritage or his inheritance he laid to waste for monsters or dinosaurs of the wilderness. And obviously not talking about regular monsters and dinosaurs, that's talking about through battles. He said that uh, Esau, Esau or those people were going to be like wild ass. He gave all that to Jacob. The inheritance went to Jacob and Esau didn't get it even though he was the elder. That's what they're speaking of. And he did get an inheritance, but he didn't get the inheritance. Okay? You have to go back and read that in Genesis. Okay. So, verse 4. Whereas, whereas Edom, okay, saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth, they, shall, they will build, but I will throw down. So in other words, he's going to let them go ahead and build it, but he's going to show them how powerful he is because he's going to tear it right down. And they will call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom Yahuwah have indignation forever. There's a lot of reasons why that is. We're not going to go into every one of them here today. But that doesn't mean that somebody from Edom or an Edomite cannot be saved. If he repent and turn from his evil ways, he'll no longer be an evil Edomite, but he'll be part of its spiritual or the nation of Israel. Okay? Don't be confused. Edomites are not locked out of the kingdom. The nation of Edom is, but not Edomite not the individual. They shall build and I will throw down and they shall call them and the border the, the border witness and the people against whom Yahuwah hath indignation forever, that nation. And your eyes will see and you 
shall say, Yahuwah will be honored from the border of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth unto you, O Kohenim, that despise my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised your name? Because they didn't keep his commandments. He's going to tell you here, Ye offer polluted bread upon his altar, upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted you? In that you say, The table of Yahuwah is contemptible. Verse 8, And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, in other words, you supposed to take the very best, the firstborn, without spot or one blemish, and you offer me the one that's worthless, or the blind one, for sacrifice, is that not evil? Yes, it is. And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto your governor. Will he be pleased with you? In other words, if he charges you taxes, give him, don't give him what he asked for, give him something else, see what happens. Will he be pleased with you or accept your, your person? Saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. And now I beg you, beseech Elohim, that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means or by your work, you've received this, where he regard, will he regard your person? He's not a respecter of person, so is he going to respect Israel when they do this? the nation? No, he's not, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for nothing? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for nothing. I have no pleasure in you. He's telling Israel that, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name will be great among the nations. See, this is where they say, oh, that Jesus' name is going to be great among the nations. That is not what this is saying. This is talking about Yahuwah's name. The Father's name will be great among the nations. Oh, well, everybody calls Jesus by that name, so you can't call him Yeshua or Yahushua or something else like that because Everybody knows that everybody know the, the white people know him by Jesus. Not at all. That holds no water whatsoever. Okay? This is talking about the Father's name. Okay? Whatever that may be. Whether it's Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yehovah, whatever it is, that's what it's talking about. Not gent to the nations here. This is talking about this is talking about the Father's name, Yahuwah's name. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name will be great among the nations. This does not talking about Jesus here, or Yahushua, or Yeshua. This is talking about the Father. And in every place incense will be offered in my name, and pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth which means the multitudes. But you have profaned it. What? His name. In that you say, the table of Yahuwah is polluted. Okay, that's how you profaned His name. Or defiled would have been, enough, could, would have been translated. And the fruit that's on it, even its food, is contemptible. Because they didn't give Him what He asked for. Okay? Not, G, not Yahushua or Jesus, but the Father, Yahushua, Yahuwah. You say, you said also, behold, what a weariness is it. And you have snuffed, it, snuffed at it, saith Yahuwah of the host, or the multitudes. And you be brought, and you bought that which was torn. In other words, they brought what was torn to the altar instead of what was perfect and the lame, and the sick. For this you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith Yahuwah the Father? Okay? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath his, in his flock a male, and vows 
and sacrifices unto Yahuwah a corrupt or a blemished thing. For I am a great king, Yahuwah the Father, saith Yahuwah of, the, of Sabaoth. And my name is dreadful among the nations. Chapter 2. And now, O you Kohenim, or priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse you your blessings. Yes, I will I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed, or I will rebuke your seed, that's your descendants, your offspring, and spread dung or re refuse upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall take you away with it. Because you're going to be in the lake of fire. That's what that's talking about. And you will know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant, Yahuwah's covenant, might be with Levi, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Now, you need to understand that the Father made a covenant with Israel, and, and again, He sent His Son to be the sacrifice, to be the blood that covered that covenant. This makes no sense if you try to make this into being the Messiah speaking here. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for fear, wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name, Yahuwah's name. The Torah of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. It's talking about the Messiah here. But it's not, the Messiah is not talking. He says, he, listen, you know grammar and you know language arts. The law of truth was in his mouth. Talking about the Messiah. He said, before my name. He said over here, for my name shall be great among the nations. That's talking about the Father's name. That's not talking about Messiah's name. So that blows that out of the water. Okay? Make sure you know that. My covenant was with him, okay? My covenant, Yahuwah's covenant, was with him, Israel, of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. And this is talking about, really, the Messiah was afraid, of, feared Yahweh or Yahuwah, and he did everything he said, but he gave those people that he gave to Messiah. All the way back. Okay, he gave him the Messiah. He ain't going to lose none of them either. Okay? Then it says, The law of truth was in his mouth, the Messiah's mouth. And lawlessness was not found in his lips. He walked with me because the Ruach was in him and he was walking circumspect. He walked with him in peace and equity. Or, or away uh, uh, with me in equity, or be or upright, and did turn many away from lawlessness or sin. Messiah did that, not the other way around. For the Kohenim, for the lips of the Kohenim should keep knowledge, but they didn't, and they should seek the law, the Torah at his mouth. Israel should seek the Torah at the Cohen's mouth, the priest. For he is the messenger or the Malach. That's, go look it up. That word is Malach of Yahuwah. It's talking about the, the priest should be the Malach or the angel of Yahuwah. So don't make more out of that word than it is to twist the Scripture. That's what you're doing. But you are departed out of the way. Talking about Israel. You have caused many to stumble at the, at the Torah. <coughs> you have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Therefore, not Yahushua, Yahuwah, not Jesus, but the Father. Therefore have I also made you a contemptible and a base, or brought you to the bottom, made you the tail instead of the head, before all the people, 
because as you have not kept my ways or his Torah but have been partial in the Torah in other words twisted it to make it fit what you wanted to do 10 this is in this is thus saying Malachi have you not all one father hath not El that's not Elohim that's El has not the mighty one created us why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Yehuda hath dwelt treacherously and abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Yehuda hath profaned the set apartness of Yahuwah, not Yahushua, Yahuwah, which he loved and hath married the daughter of a strange Elohim word God there is Elohim okay so think about this they were married to Yahuwah not Yahushua okay or not Jesus they were married to the father and they left him and married a strange Elohim the Elohim of the nations Yahuwah will cut off the man that not Yahushua not Jesus Yahuwah will cut off the man that does this the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offers an offering unto Yahuwah of the multitudes. When you offer an offering, it's not to Yahushua or Jesus, it's to the Father. Even the Messiah was an offering to him. You got we gotta get this straight. And this have have you done again, covering the covering the altar of Yahuwah with tears, with weeping, and with crying out in so much that he regards not the offering anymore, the Father, or receives it with good will at your hand. He said, even your feasts are abomination. Yet you say, wherefore or why? Yet you say, why? Because Yahuwah has been witness between you and the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously yet is you is she your companion and the wife of your covenant this is all talking about the marriage of Israel to Yahuwah and the covenant they had okay and and, and some didn't break it but as a nation they broke it some did break it some did and did not he make one? This is Ma uh, Malachi speaking here. He said, and did not he make one? Yet had he, in other words, did he not make a covenant? Make one covenant? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit. Okay? And, where at, and, and wherefore, one. Now let me tell you something. Messiah was not yet born. When Malachi, when this book of Malachi was written, so he's not speaking of Messiah. He says, "And did not he, the Father, make one, a covenant? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit? Okay, the Father had this residue of the Spirit. And wherefore, one? In other words, the Father and the Spirit are one, not the same one, but they're one, just like Yahushua or." The Messiah and the Father are one. That he might seek a goodly, a godly descendant. Therefore, take heed to your spirit or your attitude. Take control of your attitude and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. That's used as an example. Don't deal treacherously against your wife. Even if you're not together anymore, don't deal treacherously with her. For Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, that's who's the Elohim of Israel, not Messiah, Yahuwah the Father, saith that he hateth putting away, for one covers violence with his garment, saith Yahuwah of multitudes. Therefore take heed to your attitude that you deal not treacherously. I just reread that spirit as attitude because that's what it's talking about. Okay? And this is talking about to Yahuwah, not the Messiah. You have wearied Yahuwah with your words. 
yet you say, Where, wherein have we wearied him? Or how have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that does evil is good in the sight of Yahuwah, and he delights in them, or where is Elohim of judgment, you're not honoring Yahuwah when you say that. And, it's, and the greater thing that's called the, the, the assembly of Yahuwah now, or the church, as they call it, they do that. They'll call evil good and good evil in his sight. That's not good. He delights in them. In other words, he delights in those that do evil. He does not. Or where is the Elohim of judgment? When you ask that question, he's right where he's always been. Okay? Chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, my Moloch. Okay? And he's talking about his spirit. Okay? When he talks about that. And he shall prepare the way before me. Now, he sends his spirit where? To the Messiah. He remained upon him. He sent him to the prophet, but he went back and forth. But when he went to Messiah and he was baptized, that spirit remained upon him. This is what it's talking about. His messenger is his, is his Ruach or his Moloch that went to our Messiah. Listen. I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. When Johann the Immerser came, they asked him if he was the Messiah. He said, no, he was a reed shaken in the wind. You have to understand, he was talking about he was a prophet that was making the way straight and he was a Moloch to make the straight way straight for Messiah. Okay, Messiah is a Moloch or a one making the way straight. For the Father, and during the thousand year reign, that's what He's doing. He's making the way straight. He's setting up His kingdom, and then He's going to turn it over to the Father. Okay? You gotta, this got to make sense. Behold, I will send My messenger, and he shall prepare the way before Me. I'm not talking about Messiah here. Okay? Let's talk about Messiah being that messenger. And that word mala is messenger and it means angel that's why it's translated angel a lot of times so don't be confused and Yahuwah whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple and to begin with he's only going to send his spirit but when there's a new heaven and a new earth he's going to suddenly come to his temple that's going to destroy this one okay even the messenger or the Moloch of the covenant Okay, because which that's the Ruach, it's the Moloch of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he will come. The Moloch, that's capitalized there. Okay. The messenger, that word's Moloch every time, and that's talking about the, the Holy Spirit of the Ruach HaKadesh of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, and then it's capitalized in your King James, shall come, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth are the multitudes. And there's and they all confuse this all to the Messiah. There's a reference here, Matthew 11, 10, 10 which part of this is Messiah. And they're correct about that. Because he's the messenger here. Okay? And and then it says, and it also says Mark 1 2 and Luke 7 27. And Luke 1 76. And it says, but who may be, abide the day of His coming? Yahuwah's coming, not Messiah's coming. Who may abide? Who will still stand or who will still live in the day of His coming? Because it's the second resurrection and the judgment. And who shall stand before, stand when He appears? Because if you don't stand here, it's the second death. And, who, and, who, and for He is like a refiner's fire. Not Messiah, the Father. This is at the second coming. I mean the uh, second resurrection. When there's getting ready to be a new heaven and a new earth. Because He, the Father, is a refiner's fire. And like a fuller's soap. Not Messiah. And He, the, the Father, shall sit as a refiner. This is... Um, okay, this is the prophet speaking here. Malachi. Okay? And he, talking about the Father, Malachi saying this, shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the, the bin of Levi. And he's, there'll be some of the Levites pass through the fire. 
but he's going to purify them. He's going to purge out the, the rebel and the wicked and purge them as gold and silver. Get rid of all the rebels that they may offer unto Yahuwah an offering in righteousness. And that's definitely going to be going on during the millennial reign. And I will come near to you to judgment. The Father will come near to you in judgment because it's going to be the great white throne judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppose the hireling and his wages and the widow and the fatherless and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth, are the multitudes. This is talking about the Father. This is not talking about the Son. For I am Yahuwah, and I change not. Now, let's think about that statement. If this is talking about Messiah, did He not change? He was born a baby in Bethlehem. Am I right? Correct? He grew into uh, an adolescent. And He taught in the temple when He was an adolescent. About 12 years old, He taught in the temple. And then He changed again and became a man. And then He died. And then he rose, he, then the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, rose him from the dead. And then he received a spiritual body. That's another change. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. This is not talking about Messiah when he says, I change not. Okay? you got to get these things. Verse 6, For I am Yahuwah, I change not. Therefore you men of, or sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from that's why they're not all consumed because of who he is. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances, my laws, my commandments, and have not kept them. Return unto me, Yahuwah, okay, and I will return unto you, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Where shall we return to? Will a man rob Elohim? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed you? He, and he answers, In tithes and offerings. you got people out there now saying it's only Jacob that's supposed to be tithing. And they're robbing him. Why they don't want to tithe? Because of greed. They don't want to give a tenth. One tenth of everything belongs to him. You don't want to give a tenth to him? You say, Why does he need money? Because he's put forth a commandment to go out to all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And, he, and, and then he said, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he said, making them disciples. That takes money to do that. And that's why the tithe is still important. Okay? You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And test me now herewith, saith Yahuwah of the multitudes, if I will not open the windows of the Shamayim and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Test him of that. Be, be, do that. And I will rebuke you Rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither will you, your vine, cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Not Yahushua, not Jesus, but the Father. And all nations shall call you blessed. If you do what he says, if you keep his commandments, all nations will cause you be blessed, call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Your words have been arrogant against me, saith Yahuwah. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against you? You have said it is worthless to serve Elohim. And what profit is it that we have kept his law or charge? right rulings, and that we have walked mournfully before Yahuwah of Sabaoth. That's a qu question. 
verse 15 says, Now we call the proud happy. Yes, they that work wickedness are set up. Yes, they that tempt Elohim or test Elohim are even delivered. Then they that feared Yahuwah spake often one to another, and Yahuwah listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahuwah and that thought upon his name, Yahuwah's name, the Father's name. And the book is the book of life. Okay? And it, can, and it is called the Lamb's book of life. But that doesn't mean that it's not that he that the father didn't write it down verse 17 and they shall be mine in the new heaven and the earth they'd be the fathers saith you who of so both in that day when I am when I make them up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own being or son that serves him then will you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serves Elohim and him that serves him not. Chapter 4 and the final chapter of the Tanakh. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. Now, that's not going to be when the Messiah returns. The day that burns as an oven. Read Revelation chapter 20 again. And all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Burned up. Won't be nothing left. That's what they're talking about. You know, you look at a wheat field and it burns off. What do you see left? Stubble, just little spots. That's what you see, that's what that's talking about. And the day that comes shall burn them up. Burn them up don't mean burn them forever. Burn them up. When you burn something up, is anything left? No. Nope. Uh, okay, saith you who of Sabaoth that it that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Burn them up, nothing left, not even a root. But unto you that fear my name, Yahuwah's name, shall the Son of Righteousness, that's S-U-N, okay, the light, that's what it's talking about, the Son of a Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. Okay? Let there be light, and there was light, and it was good. That was the Ruach HaKadosh. That was the spirit of Elohim that moved upon the face of the waters in the beginning. And you will go forth and grow up as calves of a stall. And you will tread down the wicked. That's what, that's what our job is to do. How you do that? By doing what He says. You tread down the wicked. For they will be ashes under your feet after the fire of your feet in that day, that great and terrible day of Yahuwah, that I shall do this, saith Yahuwah of Sabaoth. Remember you the Torah of Moses, my servant, or Moshe, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. He did that on Mount Sinai, or Horeb. Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai is a mountain range. Horeb is a mountain inside of Sinai. For all Israel with, with the Torah and judgments, the law, statutes, and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahuwah. Now, see that they take this to mean that he's going to come back in the flesh. No, he's going to be raised at the first resurrection. Okay, Elijah. That's when you're going when he's going to bring back Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day okay, of Yahuwah. And he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. That's He's talking about he's going to turn the uh, Elijah is going to turn the hearts to the uh, from the, the will turn the heart of the fathers that's out there to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers. At least I come and smite the earth with a curse, which He's going to do at that time. Now that's the end of the Tanakh. The next book I'm going to is the book of Revelation. And that will complete the whole entire Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. It's all 
all laid out on my YouTube page. I have playlists for every book of the Tanakh. I'll have every playlist for the book of, of the Brit Hadashah, or the Renewed Covenant, or New Testament. So be looking for that. It's, I'm going to be finishing it up here very shortly, and everything will be laid out. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the um, Philadelphia Assemblies, go to U Philadelphia Assemblies at YouTube.com and hit the subscribe button. If you like our videos, give them a thumbs up and share them because that's how we're going to get the word out to help make disciples of nations. Okay? And then, after that, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you get notified of our next video. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.